Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. God has to love your neighbor. What does it mean to love? Jesus shows us what it means to love. To will the good of the other, to give them a helping hand. The annual Catholic Appeal is the love of Christ in action. Your generous donations provide hot meals, warm clothes, comfort, healing, and light in what can sometimes be a person's darkest hour. Jesus gives himself to us in the Eucharist, and we are to receive him and take him out into the world to transform the world. Be a part of that transformation by supporting the annual Catholic Appeal. With your donations and your prayers, hearts will be touched, lives will be changed, transformed actually in Christ. Transformed in Christ, helping all in need. Please consider supporting the 2022 Annual Catholic Appeal. Good morning, my dear friends, and once again, welcome to the Childless of Salvation program, coming to you from our studio chapel of the Holy Spirit here in Springfield. I'm your child's host, Passionist Brother Terence Scanlon. Happy Mother's Day to one and all. Mother's Day was first observed soon after the turn of the 20th century and has grown in popularity ever since then. In keeping with our childless tradition of making this special day we will place the names before our altar for those special women in our lives and honor them by our prayers and remembrance. And this year, Mother's Day coincides with Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter in which we focus on the call to priesthood. We are honored to have as our celebrant this week our very own Bishop William Byrne. We welcome him back to the Holy Spirit Chapel. And joining him today, we welcome members from the Catholic Women's Club of Springfield, who will be our special guests and readers for this celebration. Jennifer Gaffney from Sacred Heart Parish here in Springfield will be our music minister. And friends, as we do each week, we offer our heartfelt good wishes and best wishes to all who are celebrating those special birthdays or anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Happy birthday to Richard Zuron, Sr., who is celebrating his 90th birthday this week. Also sending happy birthday wishes to Anne Marie Mar Mango, who celebrates her 80th birthday this Friday. We also keep in our intentions those who are ill or homebound, especially those watching this broadcast from your hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. And because we have the basket of names to be placed before our altar, we will not have a book of remembrance this day. And any names that may have been sent in will run next week when the Book of Remembrance resumes. And following our liturgy, we'll share with you a story produced by Carol Lee McGrath on Bethlehem House in East Hampton, a valuable life-affirming outreach to mothers and fathers, providing supplies to new families. More on this annual Catholic Appeal funded agency is coming up right after our liturgy asking you to stay tuned for that. And friends, I see that Bishop Byrne is ready to begin our Mass, so we now join Jennifer Gaffney in our opening hymn of gathering and together celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. To all the mothers here and watching, both spiritual mothers and uh, biological mothers, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. Also, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, so for all the shepherds who are watching, happy Good Shepherd Day. On this day, we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have, Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For, for so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and, help, and, leading the, and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, it's a delight to be celebrating this Mass with the Catholic Women Club of Springfield. Uh, it's a wonderful representation of our, of our leaders here, of our leader, the feminine genius, as John Paul II said. St. Ignatius Loyola, nearly two, 500 years ago, wrote a spiritual masterpiece called The Extra Spiritual Exercises. And it was intended as a retreat, a four-week retreat for his Jesuits as they entered into the life of the Society of Jesus. And one of the meditations was called The Meditation on the Two Standards, or rather, Two Flags. And he asks the, the retreatant, to picture an enormous battlefield. And in this battlefield, at one end, stands our Lord in his glory, and under the other flag, Satan. And he said, first picture Satan and all the evil, ugly demons, uh, demons of war and human trafficking, demons of, of hatred, demons of all sorts, of lust, and, and if you stop and you just try to imagine the scariest, ugliest thing you could picture, it wouldn't even be that. That's how ugly and horrible Satan is. And then he says, imagine the other side where our Lord is in glory and all his army surrounds him. The angels, the saints, the apostles. And this is the image that we hear in this second of the Lord, the sort of army of the Lord, if you will, in the book of Revelation. He said, I see a multitude which no one could even count, from every race, nation, people, and tongue, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. What we see is the vision of all those saints in glory. We see the, the martyrs from all the apostles who gave them their lives all the way through the centuries to uh, people like Thomas of Becket or, or uh, saints like Maria Goretti and Maximilian Kolbe. And then we see all those others who, who have done the good works 
from Mother Teresa, St. John Paul II, all the way back to uh, St. Catherine Labore and, and John Vianney, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. You see this, what the army of the Lord looks like. And on those two sides, we realize that if you looked closely on the Lord's side, you would see all these famous faces. But then you look and you might say, hey, there's Grandma." Or we hope. Or you say, look at those ladies. They, they weren't famous, but they loved their family and took care of them in a beautiful way. On this Mother's Day, I think we would see a lot of moms in the army of the Lord in glory who glorified God through the simplest acts of love and kindness, of forgiveness and healing, of fidelity uh, to the faith and to their families. And, and that's what we celebrate this day. That the way of heaven could be made in a, in a famous way like Mother Teresa, but if all of us ended up in a ghetto in Calcutta, it'd be a pretty crowded ghetto. Uh, ghetto. Rather, in each of the fields of our own lives, this is where we're asked to sow. To not necessarily do great things, but to do great th th regular things with great love. So it's in how our smallest interactions is where our holiness is found. To be on the side of the Lord's army. Because you can't have one foot in one and one foot in the other. You can't say, well, really, I'm going to be on the Lord's team, but I also like to gossip and I want to tell these stories before I do. Not an option. That's like saying, I, 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 a sin is sin. Different levels, but you might want to say, oh, I want to be on the Lord's team, but first I'm going to kill this person. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to hate sin no matter how big or how small it is. And to wake up every day and say, Lord, let me be in your army this day. Let me be bringing your glory, your love, because the power of faith, hope, and love are more powerful than anything that the devil can dish out. But I also think on this Good Shepherd Sunday that he's a, the Lord with the sheep. Well, we often picture Jesus with the sheep, and he looks so sweet and kind and gentle. And that's what a shepherd is, I think, most of the time. They live a pretty peaceful life out in the woods out in the, under the stars, taking care of the sheep. But catch one when a wolf arrives. Suddenly that staff, which calls back the, the stick with the curve on the end, the shepherd's staff, isn't just used for calling back the lost one. It becomes a fierce weapon to get the evil one away, to protect. And that's what also we need to do, to stand up bravely for the, especially those most vulnerable, those in the unborn. Now we're about to have legislation for physician-assisted suicide. We need to stand up against those acts of predatory murder. That's what we have to do. We're called not just to be gentle, but to be fierce. The army of God is made up with lots of people that look a lot like you and me. We just want to make sure we're one of them by bringing great love, great love into everyday ordinary experiences but also great fierceness when we need to stand up for Christ and his gospel. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. And so now I ask you to please stand and profess the faith with me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus assures us that we will always be safe in the Father's hands. And so we have the confidence to turn to God now with our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our Bishop William, our priests, deacons, religious men and women, and all who nurture the spiritual life of the church, that we may always reach out to those in need with material and spiritual aid and extends God's grace to every corner of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ left us may be extended to our neighbors across the street, across the country, and across the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and aunts, and all those who model the role of mother in our lives, that they may always be blessed in the love of their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are called to the priesthood of religious life may be good shepherds to the flock they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And friends, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, we remember in a very special way the mass intention offered in loving memory of those names that are placed before our altar this day. In prayerful remembrance, we pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women here in our chapel and those watching at home, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. 
By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for, the holy, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Lord, remember your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, and Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Lord, by your dying and rising You have set us free You are our Savior We are your people And in your glory your people are free We are set free Thank you. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be brought, be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whose names are listed before our altar, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To, your, to us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope for your, in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Pelipetua, Felicity, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life. Life bless them and bestow them upon, upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace brother. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, a happy Mother's Day to all those out there, all the women out there, spiritual mothers, physical mothers, and a special happy Mother's Day to you, Mom. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, what are you doing? Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor. What does it mean to love? Jesus shows us what it means to love. To will the good of the other, to give them a helping hand. The annual Catholic Appeal is the love of Christ in action. Your generous donations provide hot meals, warm clothes, comfort, healing, and light in what can sometimes be a person's darkest hour. Jesus gives himself to us in the Eucharist, and we are to receive him and take him out into the world to transform the world. Be a part of that transformation by supporting the annual Catholic Appeal. With your donations and your prayers, hearts will be touched, lives will be changed, transformed actually in Christ. We are transformed in Christ. Transformed in Christ, helping all in need. Please consider supporting the 2022 Annual Catholic Appeal. As we celebrate Mother's Day this weekend, we highlight an Annual Catholic Appeal funded organization that is helping moms to choose life. Bethlehem House in East Hampton provides practical and emotional support for mothers facing a crisis pregnancy. Even during the pandemic, Bethlehem House continued to walk with the women and their babies. 
Carol Lee McGrath has a story now of some amazing moms and volunteers who are truly living out the gospel of life. Volunteers from Bethlehem House load up Debbie Cintron's car with baby gear, and she's going to need it. The young mom is due in July, expecting a baby boy. Debbie has had some challenges, but she says she also has faith, faith in the Lord and Bethlehem House. I was at the shelter at Catholic Charities. Um, I just heard through the grapevine that the Bethlehem House was a great place to go for new baby stuff. I'm a single mom, struggling, just trying to get my bearings. She's a beautiful girl, beautiful, beautiful mom. She'll be a beautiful mom. Pam Hibbert is the founder and executive director of Bethlehem House, a pro-life ministry supported by the annual Catholic Appeal. The nonprofit helps women with baby items and offers free pregnancy resources, including counseling and referrals for employment, health care, and educational services. It was pretty emotional watching you with Debbie. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, well... I was a Debbie <laughs> back in the day, as they say. That's one of the reasons that the ministry is also here. You know, we, we all have a past, and um, I had a conversion from that past in, in, into doing the right thing. And uh, it was like our Lord snatched me up and just put me here to do, to do this. All through the pandemic, Bethlehem House continued to serve women, but Pam says it was difficult due to necessary safety precautions, which they continue to follow. She says she's grateful for her volunteers. She has a veteran crew who comes each week to make quilts, sort clothes, do the books, and take calls from others in need. And new this spring, a group of college students from both UMass and Amherst College. I come in once a week, and we make up 12 to 15 orders of full bags of multiple, you know, packages of diapers and wipes and outfits and sleepers and creams and soaps. And that's every single week we come and make 15 full bags, sometimes more. I've encountered the love that the Lord has for me, and I recognize that the Lord has that for every single individual, uh, every single person as a person, and that includes um, babies, that includes, you know, women who are suffering from being abused in any way, shape, or form, and so that, and that means that I have to love every single human being, including, you know, those, those unborn, um, those suffering mothers, which is the whole point of the Bethlehem house. Kate Scott is a UMass sophomore and founder of the new Students for Life on campus. She's also a biochem major and tends to follow the science on the issue of when life begins. I think society and the media really tries to dehumanize a fetal human, but I think we all innately know from our childhood that a baby in a mom's stomach is a human. And because of that and because of all the scientific evidence that life begins at conception, um, I'm very pro-life. Each new mom is given a beautiful basket like this one, which has about $500 worth of baby items inside. They're also offered a car seat, a pack and play, and a bouncy seat if they need it. And Bethlehem House continues to provide services until the baby is 18 months old. But to make this work, Pam says she needs more volunteers. The ministry doesn't run without the volunteers at all, so they mean everything to me. And everything they do is done with love, something Debbie says she's grateful for. And by the way, Debbie is moving into an apartment in mid-May. Even if you're faced through adversity, there's, you could rise from the ashes like a phoenix if you have a little bit of faith. For more information on how you can help, call 413-527-2861. I'm Carolee McGrath. And remember that Bethlehem House is just one of more than 40 ministries and agencies supported by your donations to the annual Catholic Appeal. And if you haven't yet made your gift, it's not too late. You can go online to dialspringfield.org where you have a special secure donation link or call Kathy Harrington during regular business hours at 413-452 0630. Friends, that number again is 413 452 0630. 
and every dollar counts, so please make your donation today. And finally, we have a special treat for you on this Mother's Day, a musical selection by our diocesan singing priest, honoring Mary, the Mother of God. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there, and what better way to honor our mothers is by honoring our Mother Mary, the Mother of the Church, and the song will be Hail Mary, Gentle Woman. Coming up next on a special edition of Real to Real on June 4th, the singing priest will present a concert honoring this year on, of the Eucharist. That's June 4th on Real to Real. Now I want to thank Bishop for celebrating our liturgy and for his inspiring homily. We are indeed most grateful for his visit this day. We also extend our thanks as well to Jennifer Gaffney for providing our music ministry. And thank you to the Catholic Women's Club for their presence and their dedication to Catholic action, service, 
in education over these many years. And friends, asking you to join us again next week right here on the Chalice of Salvation as we welcome Father Jonathan Reardon as our Mass presider and celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Plus, we'll get a sneak preview at what to expect at this year's Eucharistic Rosary Procession in Northampton. That's coming your way next Sunday at the same time right here on the Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection. And friends, as we do each Mother's Day, in our credits today, we place the names of our Chalice crew with their mother's names. And from all of us here on Chalice, sending our love and blessings to you and all those you hold close and dear, especially our mothers. See you next Sunday. God bless. <laughs>